In The Last of Us, nature takes over society again and takes over the civilization. We imagine how it would be when a catastrophe happened all of a sudden and everyone had to drop what they're doing, pick up whatever they can, and leave. With the game, because uh, immersion is such a big component of it, Everything is seen either through Joel's perspective or Ellie's perspective, and that's it. And because we want you to spend a lot of time with them moving from space to space in real time and becoming them. With the show, no core loops in a TV show other than they sit there, watch, and enjoy it. I believe, and I know Neil agrees, we're obsessed with details. The details are everything. Your watch is broken. It's almost like there are details in places you can never see. What's your business here? Got the day off. All right, we went through. Thanks. In the QZ, we wanted to design that city as very hard and cold. That's why the lighting in that area is very bluish and overcast. We like to create this atmosphere like you're in a prison. Checkpoint still up. It's very oppressive in the Boston QZ, and we want to express that right away with everything you see. You see men with guns, you see fences up everywhere, keeping you from walking anywhere other than where the government wants you to be. You won't see a lot of trees in the QZs, you won't see a lot of grass. Everything is very sterile, everything is man-made. You can see the misery of what's happening and how society is very desperate and frustrated. I think in a really harsh way, he's figured out how to survive. Smuggling contraband, carrying out uh, deeds. Let's go wrap this up. I needed him alive. What I also love is that there were opportunities to see Marlene doing different things. Because the story's so rich, you could probably walk into any room on there and have a completely new story happening, and we get to do that. When we approach designing a space, we always have to think about the people that were living there. We curate everything that is in the scene, picture frames, the kind of beds they slept in, the furniture choices they made. So everything is customized to the personality of the space and not just placed randomly. That's the world they live in. It's a very hard and difficult world that they've just kind of found a way to survive in. In Billstown, you have a small town that is run by Bill. Don't touch! He lets nature take its course. It's a juxtaposition to what like the rest of the world is. We wanted to create Billstown in a more warm setting, you know, with the sunset there shining through nature and all of the buildings inside. It creates this different aesthetics to contrast where you just came from. This is what freedom looks like now. It's dangerous. They're coming to the door! But it's also kind of, it has this, this, this beauty to it where the world has just kind of come back and uh, overtaken it. Thanks for the heroics and all. You go to this interesting place that is a environmental change from the QZ that you're in. It's a small Massachusetts town. You meet a guy who's funny and cranky and weird. That girl nearly got us killed. She did hold her own back there. <laughs> As reluctant as Joel may be, there are real relationships in place. These are the only human relationships that he has. As much as he may not express his feelings uh, towards those relationships, they mean everything to him. I can, I can see without having any sort of knowledge of who she is, that her biggest fear is ending up alone. In the same way that Joel is, the fear is the pain of losing that and becoming reliant on their constant presence for the fear of that one day it's just going to stop. There's a lot of darkness in these games. 
It's gonna sound weird, but when I'm making these animations, I'm trying to pull as much light out as possible, despite of kind of what happens throughout it. I've now heard from a couple of people that I've watched the whole show and went back to play the game, and they said the game feels richer now, having watched the show. If you don't think there's hope for the world, why bother going on? It was very much going through the screen, as if the screen is a portal, and you're in it. You haven't seen the world, so you don't know. You're in the game, and you couldn't have asked for a more complete experience. I still think that there's kind of a glimmer of hope in this game. I think there's a glimmer of hope in every animation that we make. Ellie exploring the world, that's not a dark thing. It's a lighter way of seeing a very dark world.